in this lesson, we're going to go over a couple of theorems, um, exploring the angles that are formed when we put lines through circles. So it could be like tangent lines where we had yesterday that just pass by a circle and touch it at one point, or we're adding in a new type of line today, a secant line. A secant line is just a line that intersects a circle in exactly two points. So think of this as a chord, but it doesn't just stop on the sides of the circle. It keeps going. So this would be secant line AB. Um, this line is secant 2, circle C. Here's our first theorem. And these theorems today are pretty wordy, but all of them have this example section at the bottom. And that's kind of what I would look at if I were trying to interpret them. So in this theorem, it says if we have two secant lines, or two, could be two chords that intersect in a circle, then the measure of their angle formed is one half the sum of the measure of the intercepted arcs that it forms. So if I put, in this case it's secant line AC and BD in this circle, I'm going to form some arcs. First, we've got this set, arc AB and arc DC. Those two arcs, if I add them together and then multiply by one half, will equal the measure of angle one, or I usually think of it as finding an average. And we know vertical angles exist, so that angle would also be the same. Um, and then we do the exact same thing, but with the other arcs formed. So I've got this arc and this arc. If I find the average of those arcs, it will equal the measure of angle 2, and the vertical angle will also be the same. So it is kind of confusing, but once you apply it, you'll see that the math is pretty easy. So I want to find a couple of angle measures. Um, in this first example, we want to find the measure of angle 1. Angle 1 is in here, so I'm going to find the two intercepted arcs that go with it looks like 40 degrees and 52 degrees. And I know based on that theorem that the measure of angle one will just be the average of 40 and 52. Uh, 92 divided by two would be 46. So the measure of angle one is 46 degrees. Next one's just a little bit trickier because here I want to find the measure of an arc. Um, I'm told that this angle is 45 degrees. So if I happen to know the measure of arc GH and I were instead solving for that interior angle, I would take the measure of arc FE, I would add the measure of arc GH, I would divide by 2, and then that would equal, in this case, 45. I just want to find a number for the measure of arc GH that is going to make this true. Uh, if you want to do some guess and check, you're welcome to do that. I usually prefer just doing algebra, though. So I'm going to start by getting rid of the fraction. I'll multiply by 2 on each side. And if you didn't want to write out the measure of arc GH each time, you could have put a variable in there like X. Um, and then I'll subtract 28 on each side. 90 minus 28 is 62. So the measure of arc GH is 62 degrees. All right, so there's our first theorem. We've got two more. Our next one is also pretty long. So again, I would just write down this example part if you're taking some notes. This says that if a secant and a tangent intersect, so remember secants pass through the circle, tangents just run by the side of the circle and hit it at one point. So they're gonna intersect at that point of tangency. 
Then they'll form two angles, and each angle will be one half the measure of that angle's intercepted arc. So in this example, um, I've got angle one and angle two. The measure of angle one is one half the measure of this arc, and the measure of angle two is one half the measure of this arc. So again, that theorem is pretty wordy, but when we actually apply it, we'll see the math is fairly simple. In this example, I want to find the measure of angle 3. Well, the arc that goes with the measure of angle 3 is this one. So the measure of angle 3, based on our theorem, will be 1 half the measure of its arc. So... 220, you can multiply by 1 half, I'm going to divide by 2, would be 110 degrees is the measure of angle 3. Here's our next one. We've got an arc formed by a secant and tangent line that is 74 degrees. Um, actually, sorry, I think I said arc. We've got an angle formed by a secant and tangent line that is 74 degrees. The associated arc then, arc RT, should be twice as big, 74 times 2 would be 148 degrees. All right, and then I have one last theorem. Our last theorem is about two lines crossing in a circle. So it could be two secants, it could be a secant and a tangent, or it could be two tangents. And if two tangents meet, then they don't meet in the circle, they'll meet outside the circle. But whenever we have two lines that intersect in a circle, then the measures of the angles formed will be one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arc. So notice that no matter what type of lines I have, two secants, a secant and a tangent, or two tangents, there are always going to be two arcs created. Um, to find the measure of the angle then that's formed outside, so in all these examples we're finding the measure of angle A, you're going to figure out the difference between those two arcs. So it's always going to be big arc minus small arc, and then multiply by one half, or you could divide by two. So here I want to find the measure of angle one. Um, angle one is actually angle SRV, this angle. So I have to find the two intercepted arcs that are formed by the rays of that angle. Um, we've got one here, looks like arc SV is 80 degrees, and one here, arc TP is 40 degrees. So I'm going to find the difference between those two. Um, 80 minus 40 would be 40, and then multiply by one half, that would be 20. If you wanted to use the formula instead, it would be one half times, in parentheses, your larger arc, 80, minus your smaller arc, which is 40 in this case, and then that's exactly what I did. 80 minus 40 is 40, one half times 40 is 20 degrees. All right, here's our next one. I want to find the measure of angle V. So in order to find the measure of angle V, which is way down here, I need two intercepted arcs, XY, which we already have, and then our small one is going to be NP. Um, we don't directly have NP, but it's not too hard to find. I know that the arcs going all the way around a circle should add up to be 360 degrees. So 360 minus... 110 minus 100 minus 80. Is 70. So we know the measure of arc NP is 70, and then we can use our formula. So the measure of angle V should be 
one half the difference. So 100 minus 70. Measure of angle V is 15 degrees. And I've got one more example in this video. Here we want to find the measure of arc LN. Um, I know I've got two tangent lines here because they only meet the circle in one point. So we want to find, looks like, the measure of this arc. Um, I don't have any measures with this circle, though, so we're going to have to do some algebra. We know that if I had the measures of my arcs, um, this big one and the small one, maybe I'll call the small one X and the big one, actually, no, I'm going to call the big one X. We're going to call this small one 360 minus X. Then I would take the difference of those two arcs and I would divide by two or multiply by one half and it would have to equal 50. So let's actually do that. So I would take my big arc X, I would subtract 360 minus X. I would multiply that whole thing by one half or divide by two, I'll say divide by two. And then that would have to equal 50. We just wanna find a number for X that is gonna make this true. Um, we could do some guess and check to get there, but I like algebra, so we're gonna do some algebra. So I'm gonna start by multiplying by two on each side, just so I can get rid of the fraction. So that's gonna get us to X minus the quantity 360 minus x equals 100. Next thing I want to do is kind of get rid of those parentheses. Um, remember when I subtract something in parentheses, I can think of it as multiplying everything in the parentheses by a negative 1. So let's do that and let's distribute the negative 1. I get x minus 360 um, negative 1 times negative x would be positive x. And then I'll add 360 onto each side, and when I do that, I'm going to combine my two x's. And then I'll divide by 2 on each side. X is 230. All right, now we have to go back to our original picture. I wanted to find the measure of arc LN. There are only two letters there, so that tells me I'm referring to the minor arc, the part that I colored in in green in this picture. So in this case, we would have 360 minus X, which was 230. Um, that is 130. So the measure of arc LN is 130 degrees.